Okay, hi everybody. Uh, tutorial video for second year part-time maths four. Um, this is going to be um, a former exam question on sequences and series and hopefully that will help um, to you know get this as something that you can do for assessment um, and hopefully you'll be able to refer to this uh, as um, you know as a as the assessment rolls out in the next couple of days so my hope is that this is something that you can you can follow okay so this specific question is um, from the 2017 exam and the 2017 exam Uh, is up on um, the Moodle page with a full solution set, but I want to talk you through it, okay? Um, I could give you one that you don't have something to refer to, but um, I, I think having a solution set that's written out in full and, and seeing me work through it might be, might be helpful. So this is question four from the 2017 paper. Okay, and it's broken up into three parts. We have A, B, and C. Um, it says here, A is that the sixth term of a geometric series, we have A6, is equal to 1 over 40. Okay, and we're told that the ninth term is 1 over 320. And what we want is the general term. Uh, I'm using A's, the question uses U's, it doesn't really matter. Um, I was taught this subject originally using A's as notation, and it confuses me a little bit when I, uh, I have to use something else. A, U, whatever you want to call it, okay, um, is fine with me. Just don't call it S, S means sum, okay. And we want, first of all, the general term. And the general term here is the nth term. Okay, and how do I find that? Okay, well, remember that a geometric series looks like this. Okay, okay, we have the sum goes, i goes from, uh, n goes from 1 to infinity. We have some multiple a, and then we have an or, which goes to the power n minus 1. So we end up with a, and then we have a times r, and then a r squared, and so on. Okay, so that's the, the situation here. And what we have is a common ratio. We always have that a n plus 1 over a n is always going to be the r. Okay, in fact, that's what defines a geometric series. Okay, so keeping this in mind, and again, you wouldn't necessarily have to write this, but this is just me trying to explain things as I go along. I am now able uh, to have the following in mind here. Okay, I know that what is A6 going to be? A6, which is 1 over 40, is definitely the same thing as A or, and I have 6 minus 1 is the power, and that's 5. And I know that a9, the ninth term, is 1 over 320, and that's going to be equal to a, or, and instead of 9 here, I take 1 away, and I have 8 as the power. So, now, that means that if I divide a or to the 8, divided by a or to the 5, what would that be? That would be a or to the 8 on top. I really should have done this for, uh, this for the first time, but uh, A or to the 5 on bottom. The A's will cancel. I will have or to the 8 on top. I will have or to the 5 on bottom. And that will just give me or cubed. Okay? I know I pulled that away a little bit quick, but it's right there for reference now that you can uh, compare, uh, work on. Okay? Reference. Okay, so I know or cubed is going to be this term divided by this term. 
Okay, so what do I have? So I know that 1 over 320 divided by, um, which divided by 1 over 40 is equal to or cubed. Okay, and we know that if we um, divide fractions, we turn the second one upside down and multiply. So multiply it by 40 over 1. That has to be equal to or cubed. And this is 40 over 320. And 40 over 320 goes in 1 eighth times. So 1 eighth is going to be equal to or cubed. And you can do that on a calculator. You don't need to be able to do it in your head. But now this tells me that or needs to be the cubic root of 1 eighth. And the cubic root of 1 eighth is 1 half. So or is equal to 1 half. Okay, and now how do I find the a? Well, the a is pretty simple because I have expressions um, for a6 and for a9 involving the or, and I can use either one. Okay, so now I have that a6 is equal to 1 over 40, and this is definitely equal to, what do I have? And I have a times or to the 5. Okay. Which is, so that means that 1 over 40 is definitely equal to um, what? Well, 1 over 40 is um, uh, going to be equal to a times, and or to the 5 is going to be 1 half to the 5. Uh, 1 half is to the 5. Uh, that might not come out very clear on camera. Let me rewrite that line. Let's see if I can change markers as well. That might make things a little bit clearer. Hopefully this one's a little bit clearer. Uh, yeah, this one's better. 1 over 40 then is going to be equal to a, and I have 1 half raised to the power of one, uh, 5 here. And when I raise uh, 1 half to the power of 5, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So this is equal to a over 32. Okay, so that means that A has to be equal to what? Well, I just bring the 32 across and I have 32 over 40. And 32 over 40 is a fairly simple and straightforward number. Okay, uh, this is 10, this is 8, so this is 8 over 10 which is the same as 4 over 5. And we can verify that very quickly on a calculator. Let's just do that here, just so that we're all comfortable. Okay, so we have 4 over 5. And I'm going to multiply that by, and in a bracket, I will have 1, uh, so I'm going to make, uh, oops. We have 1 half, which gets raised to the power of 5. Okay, and that's 1 over 40, exactly as, a, as it should be. Okay, so we found the general term, almost, not quite. Um, I found the A and I found the OR, but I haven't found the general term. So, general term is AN, which is equal to the A times OR to the N minus 1. Okay, which means that I'm going to have... 4 over 5 multiplies 1 half to the n minus 1. Okay, and that's uh, how I would finish this off. That's the first part. That's part 1. Okay, that's part 1. Now we have a part 2. By the way, I know it looks like I'm writing an awful lot here because the, um, you know, the, the handwriting is so large, but... Honestly, you can compress all of this down into a very, very small area um, when you, uh, you know, when you write a normal size. So don't feel like I'm, I'm writing a huge amount here. I'm really not. It says an expression for the sum of the first n terms. Oh, sorry, no, I, I want the twelfth term for first. That's the second part of uh, this one here. So I need a twelve. Okay, which is pretty simple. That's going to be four over five. Raise. Multiply that by 1 half raised to the power, and it's 12 minus 1. 
So that's a very simple four fifths by one half power 11. Now, honestly, if you left it there, I would not take anything away from you. But if you want to go further, of course you can. Four over five bracket, one half. And that has to get raised, power 11. Goes into the calculator, gives me a number of 1 over 2560. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Okay. Okay, now, um, an expression for the sum of the first n terms. Okay, well, this requires. Um, a little bit of uh, formula knowledge on your part, but of course, um, this is an open book exam, so you can just reference it. It's not a not massively massively tricky. Okay, uh, so what's the expression for the sum of the first n terms? Well, the expression for the sum of the first n terms is going to go like this. We have i goes from one to n here. Okay, and the formula, of course, is a i or whatever. Okay. That's equal to Sn. Okay, and this is something that we can get from uh, uh, our notes. Okay, and the formula is um, remembering that Ai here is going to be equal to A times or I minus 1. We then have that Sn is always going to be equal to its A times 1 minus or to the power n, and on the bottom we have one minus or, okay? So the only bit that depends on n is this or to the n in the bracket here, okay? Again, just reference it from your notes. It's, you know, not something I expect you to know off by heart uh, going into this test um, or this assessment. So that's Sn, and now it says find the sum of the first eight terms, okay? So I want S8. Well, that's pretty simple. All I'm going to do is put the A and the OR that I have just found in and use N equals 8. So this is going to be what? Well, A was 4 over 5. So I have 4 over 5. That multiplies 1 minus, and I have 1 half, which is the OR, and that gets raised to the power N. N in this case is 8 because I'm working at the 8th uh, sum, 8th partial sum. And now I have one minus one half on bottom. Okay, fairly simple and fairly straightforward to keep moving through this. Okay, this is four fifths. We'll leave that the way it is for just a moment. Okay, now I have one minus one half to the eighth. Okay, so one minus, and I have one half, which I have to raise. Oops. Okay, one half raised to the eighth. Okay, so that's going to be my term that goes in there. That's 255 over 256. Okay, and on the bottom, one minus one half is just one half. Okay, and of course, dividing fractions is a fairly simple thing to do. I turn the fraction upside down and multiply. So this is. 4 over 5 is going to multiply 255 over 256. And on the bottom, uh, sorry, the on the bottom I had 1 half. That's going to come up as a 2 over 1. It's going to come up as a multiplication by 2 over 1. So now I can enter all of this as, as just a series of fractions, or I can work it out longhand, whatever you like. I don't really mind. 255 over 256, and then I have multiplied by 2 over 1, okay, which is what I'm getting there, and that's 51 over 32. Okay, so that's my part 2 complete, okay, and it says, is the series convergent, and if so, find the value of S infinity, okay. And we remember that geometric series always converge. This 
marker is dying on me. Let's see if I can find another one here. They always converge. Or minus one has to be less than or, which has to be less than positive one. Okay, and or here is one half. So in this case, or is one half, so convergent. And we saw this in the, uh, the notes, but all I have to do uh, for the sum to infinity is I just let n go to infinity here, which means that I would have one half going to the infinity here. And of course, as I take powers of a fraction, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So this one actually goes to zero, and I just end up with s infinity is going to be equal to the number a, and I have one minus or underneath. A was a number four over five, so I have four over five. And I'm going to divide that, okay, by one minus one half, which means that I have four over five is being divided by one half, which means I have four over five getting multiplied by two over one which means I have eight over five is my limit. Okay, uh, please let me pause here while I try to find a better pen, okay? Okay, we're back. Uh, brand new Sharpie should be fine, okay? Um, it will almost certainly make me dizzy in a couple of minutes though, so uh, let's try to get through the rest of this question as quick as we can. Um, or let's not do that, let's not go as quick as we can, let's just try to do it as well as we can. Okay, so that's uh, that's all of part A then. Okay, that's all of part A covered. We have the, the sum to infinity. Of course, if we had or bigger than one, uh, we wouldn't have a convergent series and we wouldn't have to uh, say what the sum to infinity was, okay, which could happen. Okay, um, it says here, use the ratio test to uh, test the following series for convergence. So this is part B here. Uh, this might not look so great because it's a fine point. I'll try to do the best I can with it. So I have the sum to infinity. n equals 1. We have n cubed. Well, this is, this is going to be fine. We have 2 to the n. And on the bottom, we have an n plus 3 factorial. And it says, use the ratio test to see if this converges, okay? Um, so what's the ratio test? We take the absolute value of an plus 1, the n plus first term, we divide that by an, okay? And we have three possibilities, okay? If it's less than 1, we know it's definitely convergent. If it's um, greater than one, we know that it is definitely divergent. And if it's equal to one, it's completely uh, inconclusive. And I want to point out that I have done past exam papers for this module before where the correct answer is that it's inconclusive. So don't feel like you have to be getting, um, uh, you know, convergent or divergent. Inconclusive is a perfectly correct answer if that is what um, comes out of the, the mathematics, okay? So, first of all, I need to know what the general term is, and of course it's given to me right here. It is equal to n cubed, two to the n, and on the bottom, I have n plus three factorial. Okay, that's my a n. I also need to know a n plus one, okay, which is my n plus first term, What's that going to be? Well, I take n, anywhere I see an n, I'm just going to raise it by 1. So instead of n cubed, I now have n plus 1 cubed. Okay. Instead of 2 to the n, I now have 2 to the n plus 1. Okay. And instead of n plus 3, I now have 
n plus 1, plus 3, and that's factorial. Now there is a little bit of cleaning up that I can do here. It's not a... Oh, sorry, not power 4, then. factorial. Sorry. Um, so let's, uh, let's clean that up just a little bit. I can. I was getting ahead of myself here. I can change this to n plus 1 cubed 2n plus 1 to the power n plus 1. And on the bottom, n plus 1 plus 3 is just n plus 4 factorial. Okay? So now what I need to do is divide this term by this term. Okay? Okay, so how do I divide fractions? Well, I, I turn one of them upside down um, and multiply. Okay, so I have a n plus 1, and I need to divide that by a n. Technically speaking, I should be taking the absolute value, but everything is positive, so that doesn't come in in this case. Okay, what's that going to be? That's going to be this one. Okay, I have n plus 1 raised to the power of 3. Okay, I have 2n plus 1. And I have an n plus 4 factorial. Okay, and that needs to get multiplied. And now I have this one flipped upside down. Okay, so I have n plus 3 factorial. So this should be an exclamation point. I'll try to clean that up a little bit. And here I have n cubed. Okay, and here I have 2n. And there is some cancellation that happens almost immediately. The first one to note is remember that n factorial is equal to what? Well, that's n times n minus 1 times all the way down to by 2 by 1. Okay, De kind of multiply multiplication decreasing down from n to 1. So n plus 4 factorial, okay, includes all of n plus 3 factorial with the exception of the next term. So in particular, n plus 4 factorial is equal to n plus 4 by n plus 3 all the way down to by 2 by 1, okay, and that's equal to n plus 4 multiplied by n plus 3 factorial. Okay. So um, that means this bit is going to cancel with this bit and just leave me um, the n plus 4 on the bottom. Okay, so I have a n here. What do I have? Well, the n plus 3 here uh, factorial is going to cancel with the n plus 4 factorial everywhere except the original n plus 4 here. So that's going to go away. The other thing is that I have 2 to the n plus 1 here and I have 2 to the n here, which means that I have n powers of 2 and n plus 1 powers of 2, which means n of those powers of 2 will cancel away on top and on bottom, and I'm just left with one power of 2 on top. So I'm just going to bring together the bits that so far have no cancellation, uh, have cancellation, I have a 2, and I have an n plus 4. That's coming from this 2n plus 1 cancelling with this 2 to the n, a 2 to the n plus 1 cancelling with 2 to the n, and the n plus 4 factorial cancelling with the n plus 3 factorial. So that is everything that I have so far cancelled. Then I have this bit. I have n plus 1 cubed, and I have n cubed. Now, I could go and expand all of this out, okay? That, that uh, is entirely um, doable, but really I, I don't actually need all of it um, for a moment that we'll see here. Let's have a look at um, what happens here. Okay, so what do I end up with? I end up with 2 times n plus 1 cubed Okay, and then I have, when I multiply at the bottom here, I'm going to have n to the power 4, and then I'm going to have plus 4 times n cubed. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Now, n plus 1 cubed is, uh, you know, something I might want to expand out, but actually I, I don't really need to. This is going to be equal to 2 times, and I know that the first term here is n cubed. Actually, I will expand it all out, because why not? It's n cubed, 3n squared, plus 3n, plus 1. Okay, that's the, uh, the formula here. Okay, but you can forget about all of that. The only thing I really needed to know was that it was an n cubed on top. Okay, and then on the bottom, I have n to the 4, and I have 4n cubed. And now, how did we see what happened as n goes to infinity? Okay, how did we see what happened as n goes to infinity? Well, what we did is we divided on top and on bottom by the highest power of n that appears. Okay, we divided on top and on bottom by the highest power of n that appears. And the highest power of n is n to the 4. Okay, n to the 4 is my highest power of n. So what do I have here? Well, I'm going to have 2, and we can leave that where it is. And now I need to divide all of this, this here by n to the 4. And what do I have? Well, if I divide n cubed by n to the 4, I just, I'm left with 1 over n. Then I'm going to have 3 over n squared. Then I will have 3 over n cubed. And then I will have 1 over n to the 4. That's my numerator. Okay. Now I need to divide on bottom by exactly the same, ter uh, same term, the n to the 4. When I divide n to the 4 by n to the 4, I'm left with 1. And then I'm going to have 4 n cubed divided by n to the 4 will just leave me 1n on the bottom. Okay. Now, what happens as I let n go to infinity? Okay. Well, this 2 that multiplies stays exactly the same. Okay, nothing happens to that 2. As n gets really big, 1 over n goes to 0. And in fact, something over n squared also goes to 0. Something over n cubed also goes to 0. And something over n to the 4 also goes to 0. Now you might want to say, okay, well that means that I have 0. Eh, be careful, okay? I need to make sure that I don't have a 0 on the bottom. And thankfully I don't, because this 1 here does not depend on n, and it has absolutely no concern about what happens to... Um, about what happens to um, about what happens to n, and this bit here goes to zero, okay? Because the n gets large. So what do I end up with? I end up with zero over one, which is zero. So that means what? Well, that means as the uh, n gets very very large, okay, um, the number on top. Um, is uh, an inconsiderate, uh, like a, a, um, uh, an extraordinarily small fraction of the one uh, that came before it. Okay, so so now we have the a n plus one over a n. That ratio goes to zero. Okay which is less than 1. So by the ratio test, the series converges. And of course, I don't know what it converges to. I only know that it does, in fact, converge. Okay, so um, videos 
starting to get to about 30 minutes, so I have to stop here, and I will do part C in the next video.